Okay, so in today's class, what we are going to talk about is the syllabus, overall structure, textbook, and the great ideas that I had for this class. So let me start with the syllabus. By the way, you can go to Canvas and I have uploaded the syllabus. I have uploaded even the slides that we are going to talk about. So uh, let me pull the, the syllabus. And then share the screen. So this class <clears throat> is EGR 456 and EGR 546, which is robotics two. That is aerial robotics. And in this class, we are going to study about the robots that fly. And there are two types of robots. One is a fixed wing, like airplane. The second type, is a sort of helicopter, but nowadays uh, quadcopters are very famous. So you have four rotors or you have hexacopters that are very famous. So they are called multi-rotors because helicopter has just one rotor on top. Multi-copters have more than one. So we are going to study about multi-copters. And again, we will meet here six to seven fifteen and the prerequisites egr 455 and matlab and introduction to multi-copter design and control is the textbook that we are going to use uh, this textbook is available online even at amazon even kindle version is available it's not very expensive i think 50 bucks so it would be a, a good investment if you buy this book and there will be a lot of hands-on exercises that I planned for this lab, I mean, for this course. And I will tell you what I have in my mind, but depending upon how the COVID situation plays out, we may have to kind of uh, make some changes. So how to succeed in, that in this course? Attend all the, the le lectures, complete assignments, check your ASU email, and in this class, there will be just projects, no quizzes, uh, no final. So you just work on the projects. And for the projects, I would strongly recommend, uh, there are some projects where you have to work alone. For example, I'm gonna ask you to do some online courses, but you have to do those alone. Uh, and some projects like there are some drone labs, programming the drones, updating the firmware of the drone, uh, using MATLAB to control the drone, update the firmware, all that type of stuff that you can do in the groups of two. So all the assignments will be submitted online, no in person. And I would, the, the class schedule will be posted on Canvas. And then if you need some additional help, please don't copy. Uh, don't use the solutions uh, or the course that are online. If you use them as reference, please modify them. Just don't use cut, copy and paste and then submit those uh, as your own. Then if you need some help or if you need some additional accommodations, you can let me know. And again, I will post some deadlines for the courses and projects. Uh, if you need some extra time, that's fine because of the COVID or some other situation. If you think that, hey, you're not able to do it. If you need some extra time, just uh, let me know. But make sure that at least five days before the grades are due, all the assignments are uploaded so that your grades can be posted on time. So what are we going to study in this course? We are going to study 
the similar stuff that we studied in robotics one, but in robotics one, we used articulated arms. So we looked at DH parameters, we looked at the dynamics, we looked at the control. In this class, we are gonna look at the dynamics and controls of flying robots, aerial robots. And next time, I'm gonna bring a couple of drones with me and then I will show you, uh, I'll get help you setting up your computer uh, and I'll show you how you can program the drones. So any question on the syllabus, either from in-person students or from online students? Any questions? Yeah? Yeah, just, sir, just to clarify, you will have two projects and then labs? Or... No, I think you will have about five to six projects, no labs. And those labs will be as part of the projects. So. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Do these projects need to be controlled by Android, Bluetooth, or... Why do you hate that so much now? <laughs> because, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, if you, so, there are two drone platforms that we are going to use. And I'll tell you what those platforms are. Oh, wow, somebody already found books somewhere. <laughs> Man, pay attention to what I'm talking about. So, so there are two drone platforms that we are going to use. The first platform is uh, something called as Halo. And I'll tell you the reason for that platform in just a second. So most of our projects would involve one of those two platforms. So let me go online and show you what that platform is. Halo PDU. And I will share my screen. So, and I have been playing with this drone for a long, long time, for at least one, one and a half year. So much so that uh, this is a fantastic drone, almost indestructible. And then you can actually program it with Python. You can program it with Swift and lots and lots of uh, other software. Uh, so I have purchased a few Telo drones, okay? So I have some drones purchased for this class. But unfortunately, I don't have drone for each and every student. So what I was hoping when I started looking at the labs is I could loan out the drones or you can come to the, the lab. So there are two, actually there are two locations where you can do the labs. The first location is at Poly campus. Uh, Tech 165, which is called as the robotic studio. So I will have a, a grader and a TA help you out with the lab at uh, Tech 165 every Friday. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little confused because Gil asked the question earlier. He said there's no labs, and now you're saying there's a lab. Yeah, the lab is part of the project. Does that make sense? Okay. So. So basically think about it like you will have a project and in project, there will be something like go to drone blocks, finish uh, the lesson on how to control Telo drone with uh, maybe Python or uh, using uh, some Node.js or something else. And then there is this lab that you have to finish. Complete it, so lab one, lab two. And then that whole thing is as a project, you'll upload it. Does it make sense? No. So it's not just one lab, just all the labs will be uh, part of the project. Okay, online question. All right, now, so I have these Telo EDU drones. What I would do is, uh, there are two options and you can tell me which option works the best for you guys. So if you can, form groups of four students, you can check out a drone at the beginning of the semester. 
and return the drone. It's a, it's, they are brand new drones. So brand new packets. So basically it comes with the drone, it comes with the battery, it comes with the guard, it comes with the fly pad, everything. So four students will take the responsibility of one drone, take it, fly it, study it, and then return it the way you got it at the end of the class. I mean, at the end of the semester. But you have to turn in your individual reports. So it will be up to you to coordinate that who is going to do the lab or how you are going to do the lab. Perhaps you can all come together or two students can work on the lab, do the lab, all that stuff. But recognize that I understand that this means that you will have to be share, you will be sharing uh, one resource. You will take it home, but you'll be sharing. If you are not comfortable, then uh, or if you are taking this class from uh, maybe some other states, you are not in state, then I would recommend you purchasing <coughs> this and then either keep playing with it or at the end of the semester, sell it. So that's also fine. All right. So, so <laughs> and, and I'm, I promise you, once you start playing with this drone, you wouldn't sell it because you can actually. It's meant so much so that my uh, 10 year old daughter started programming the drone and then uh, doing flips and crazy maneuvers and then recognition and people recognition and all that stuff. It's so simple to use. So, but if you want to get a drone for yourself, get DJI Hello EDU. If you go on to eBay, you would get the same drone significantly cheaper. As long as you buy it from official uh, uh, DJI store. So you go to eBay and then you can buy a drone for yourself. But if not, don't worry. I have got drones. So I can loan those out. You can check out the drone. So just like the last year, four students would come. Uh, they will put your name. You will put your name. We will mark the serial number of the drone. You take the drone, use it, you bring it back, we would check it, and then uh, uh, we, you would be good. For some reason, if the drone breaks, and that can happen, that instead of flying the drone, maybe it goes and lands in a, uh, in a bathtub, and then we, that can happen. So uh, then you will have to purchase a new drone. Four students will have to purchase a new drone, and then just uh, give it to us because then I would like to reuse these drones for the class in summer and class next spring. Any questions here? Uh, yeah. So in the case you buy your own drone, do you still have to be in the group of four? No. Okay. Well, actually, I would be honest. You can do so much so with this drone. You work for Kata, right? Yes. Yeah, then you should buy this. Okay. Actually, I asked Doug Limbaugh to buy your drone. Okay. <laughs> Because he 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 bought my drones long time ago. So just or even better, ask him to sponsor a few drones for us. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Doug, Doug Limbaugh. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, okay. What is this side story? When I came to ASU in 2007, before coming to ASU, I designed the flight control system for Bell 609. Bell 609 is a tilt rotor aircraft. I don't know if you know what that means. It takes off a helicopter, flies as plane. I designed the flight control, got the TSO FAA, came to ASU for to do some fantastic drone stuff. And our lab, when I say our lab, at that time, I was just me and my two students. We built the very first drone at ASU, which flew. Don't comment me or comment me or comment on that right now. In, in the, the polytechnic campus. Uh, it was a small drone, so it's okay. But unfortunately, uh, then we started playing with it. It was a fixed wing drone. And then we got a research contract with Qatar Technologies and they funded uh, building a slightly larger drone. So in 2008, our lab was the first lab that built a flying drone here and flew on the campus. But then 
like we got another DOD contract to build a, a stop rotor. Basically, again, the, the helicopter that mid flight transition as plane. We built that, we did the flight test. And then uh, I took a break from uh, UAV and all that stuff because there's a personal reason for it. I was working with a team of students and now one of them works for Boeing, one of them works for Lockheed. And the third guy, uh, who was a, a pilot, and he and his uncle, they rented a hangar in, in the, the airport here and built themselves an ultralight aircraft. I don't know if you know what is an ultralight aircraft. Ultralight aircraft is super risky. No insurance company will insure you if you say that I fly or I sit in an ultralight aircraft. So please. So think about it. So ultralight aircraft is just like a canopy, small, uh, a great engine in front of uh, the, the aircraft. And you have the fuel tanks on the top of the wings and it's completely open. I mean, it's fun to fly. I, 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 I mean, I actually sat with him. It was a two seater and he flew around. He went from here to Cedar Rapids, Cedar Rapids to Oshkosh. He did sort of a, uh, half of uh, United States on that aircraft. It was all good. Uh, but in 2010, end of 2010, he and his mm -hmm. uncle, they were trying to fly you know, Falcon Field aircraft here and uh, Falcon, Falcon Field Airport. And the aircraft caught fire and both of them died. So I decided to take a break from UAVs and all flying and all that stuff. And after a decade, uh, after one decade, uh, the contracted us to build the aircraft. And I said, okay, now uh, let's do it. So I'm again, come, I came back into the drones and flying drones and all that. So lesson here is uh, be very careful when you fly the drones. And even though these drones are safe, uh, just be very, very careful. When you fly any of these drones, two things important. Uh, these are small drones, so they won't cause you any harm, but always wear uh, safety glasses and always wear gloves. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you may cut your finger or uh, if you don't, you definitely wear safety glasses. Mm -hmm. So, Telo EDU, uh, that is the drone that I would loan out to you for students. So, if you want to form a group, but then just make sure that. Uh, you are able to coordinate on how to work on the projects and so on. If you buy a drone, you can buy those drones uh, from uh, eBay and you will get that drone very cheaply. It would, yeah. Uh, so uh, is that all that we need or where is the higher version that we might need? No, no. So there is another version that, that you need, but just, be, just uh, bear with me for a sec. Now, what is the, the advantage? So, yeah, just buy Telo EDU. You can buy those Telos. Uh, I've seen Telos very inexpensive. DJI Telo. There are two versions. One is just Telo, and second one is Telo EDU. Telo EDU will allow you to do swarming. So, you can actually do the true drones, formation flight, and coordination and collaboration. So, Telo EDU is the drone. Okay. okay, there is another drone, that platform that I'm gonna strongly recommend that you buy. Okay, and I, I tell you the reason why. That drone is called Parrot Mambo. Now, unfortunately, yeah, I know, I know, yeah, that's always I'll tell you the reason why. A few years ago, MathWorks, in coordination, in collaboration with MIT, rewrote the firmware for this drone. So the drone flight control software is now in MATLAB. So, and I will show you what I mean by that. So you can actually program the flight control software, or actually you can control the drone using uh, MATLAB. Now, we don't need, so I also have a few Parrot Mumbo's drones, so that I can give you. What I want to tell you is this. 
you can buy this book. This is a forty dollar zone, and you can buy this. I bought a couple of those, and basically they work very well. So you don't have to buy the drone, which is three hundred bucks, or for that matter, one hundred bucks. And so basically, what this drone is missing, I'll tell you. And I have this. I I bought the exact same drone. I bought quite a few of those, program those, do those. It does not have a battery, and it does not have charge. You can buy the battery for six ninety nine. On eBay, and you can buy the props for three ninety nine on eBay. So, in forty five dollars, you will have a a fantastic platform. And even though it says, as long as uh, it, so I'm going to show you how to update the firmware. Uh, Not in next class, but next week. So once you have the drone, how do you actually fly the drone so that you can use MATLAB to write the flight control system? And it works. It works with this drone. So what I'm going to do is I will teach you that how to program this drone using MATLAB, how to update the flight control system. and you will actually see the control inner control loop outer control loop all that type of stuff uh, because once you have matlab you can program this way the other thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have the guards now if you bring drone to class please don't add props so if you buy this drone you can buy the props but in the class we will not have props we will just play with the the bare motors And with just the motors, you can do the pitch, roll, PID control, all that stuff. It will work fine. So if you buy the drone, you just buy the drone. You need a micro USB cable. Come to class. I will show you how to set this drone up and how to play with this or how to program this drone. And if you are adventurous, uh, what you can do is, I actually talked to this uh, sailor at one point. Uh, if Ten or fifteen of you combine, you will get this drone for anywhere between, depending upon how many students want to buy it. Uh, if ten students come together, you will get this drone for thirty-seven, thirty-eight bucks. If twenty, twenty-five students come together, you may be able to get this drone for thirty-five bucks. So, but if you want, again, same thing. Uh, you can again form the team of four students. and then i would loan out a drone for you to use so yeah so we can get either or not oh, so we, we don't need both no you will need both okay. so 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 what i'm saying is uh, i tell you the telo drone has the capability to program with python program with swift it can do it can run machine learning algorithms it can do lot of interesting stuff the problem is we don't have access the flight control software this drone we have complete control over the flight control software so i'm not going to teach you just aerial robotics with equations what i want to do is i want to teach you what i learned on job where when you go to the flight control system what are you what exactly is the pid loop where it is implemented and bear with me for a second i will show you what it means so try to get this drone and then you can find the props for mini drone they are 3 bucks and then batteries are 6 bucks yeah uh, what kind of battery is it it's a parrot mini drone battery okay. so parrot mambo battery so it will be maybe by some yeah so parrot mambo battery and it's last time i saw it for 6 bucks so you can look it up to 699 this is the battery Okay. Okay. So the next thing is, and let me let me make a case what I want to do. So, please install the latest and greatest MATLAB when you come 
next time. And then what we are going to do is we are going to install the current support package for current image room. So this is the support package that we need to rewrite the flight control system or flight control code for the parent mini group. And it's not straightforward, but I will show you how it is done. So next week, I'm gonna set you up. Uh, so next week uh, on a Tuesday's class, but let next week Thursday's class, I would bring the drone and I would go through flashing the firmware of the drone so that we can control the drone, program the drone, low level programming, not high level programming, program the low level drone uh, functions using simulation. So this is the support package that we want to install. There is another support package for Taylor drone. Taylor drone, uh, from MATLAB that we should install. And there is a MATLAB support package for Parrot mini drones. This is Simulink. There, is, there are two packages. One is Simulink package, one is MATLAB package. But just for TELO, there is only MATLAB package. So you should install all that. And then we would be good to go with the project slash labs for this class. I promise you it's gonna be a lot of fun. So yeah. Yeah, I can put the post the, the the link for the drone. But once again, let me tell you, it's it is absolutely not required you to purchase Telo or this drone. If you if you decide to go that route, you just have to share the drone. Yeah. Uh, why, why would we need? If you are purchasing that, so after the class, I would recommend that you decide whether you want to purchase it uh, or you don't want to purchase it. Uh, if more students can purchase it, at the same time, you can make an offer that will give you discount. If you want to purchase it, I say that purchase it right away. And uh, yes, I would purchase, uh, I'm assuming we are going to purchase. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm so you can think about it. Uh, I have some spare props that I can give you. If you want. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will have to buy your own props. Yeah. What do you mean for all of the students to come together to be a full folder and put a part in OG new props? What do I need from you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. So just form the groups. Just form the groups. Form the groups. <laughs> and then I will announce in next class when you can come, just like last year, last semester. You can come and uh, we have a grader. Teja is the grader for this class. There is uh, there is another student who is uh, helping us. You can come and then check out a drone and then just turn it in at the end. Well, of I'm the... saying for the parent mini, uh, is it the this kind of bulk order with however many people you just mentioned? Uh, let me see. The class enrollment is right now. Uh, it, it's, uh, I think four students. So the same four students that coming together for Telo, I would give you a Telo and I would be a parent. Uh, so what are you trying to say is that, uh, how do we all come together so that we can get a lower offer for the uh, parent? What is all about, like if you come together, you don't have to right? So how do we do that? Is that oh, that's what I was trying to say, that at the end of the class, somebody can take the lead. And say, hey, I want this drone. So, assuming that there are 10 people, one of you would make an offer for 35. Oh, independently, not drone. Really. No, no. I, I can't deal with your money. It's no, no. <laughs> no, me. No, me. Me, no money. Your money, you purchase. I only teach. Yeah. Available, they are free of cost. No, on Mac. Uh, yes, they are available on Mac. But I have run all those algorithms and codes in Windows. Remember, we are doing low level programs. When I say low level programming, you will be accessing the registers. 
I don't know math. So if there is an issue with math, I won't be able to help you. You will have so basically here is what's going to happen. We are going to create a personal area network with a drone and then upload the code or the firmware wirelessly onto the drone. It requires, it's actually, a, there are multiple layers. You need to have certain Bluetooth stack. You need to have certain uh, configuration. Only then that thing will work. I don't know that in Windows, but, but uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know in Mac, so. But it's, MATLAB has fantastic help. It works. I haven't tried on that. Yeah. Uh, so I think you answered this question already, but just to clarify, we don't need both, right? We are going to use both. You don't have to purchase either of those. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, they, okay. Too bad. This drone. Uh, basically, parrot stopped filling this drone, uh, and that was sad. Yeah. So everyone understood. So we are going to use two platforms. One is Telo ADU, and second one is Parrot Mumbo. Do not buy Parrot Rolling Spider or do not buy any other drones from Parrot. I bought them all. Simulink package works best with Mumbo. I also bought the X-Plane from Parrot. So the, this software works well with Mumbo. No other drone. So if you want to buy, you can buy or I can give you or you can form the groups and then I will distribute the drones next week. Yeah. So we're forming groups, but it's not actually a group project. Is that what you're saying? So you can form, and I need to be super, super careful with this. You can form a group. There will be a project. You can choose to work in a group and help each other out. That's totally fine. But you will have to turn in your own report. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Last time I got email from him. Hey, I work with uh, Satwik. Satwik submitted the report. He got the grade. I did not get any grade. And then I go check uh, Satwik's report. It doesn't mention that student's name. So there is no way I can know that. Yeah, you work with Satwik. And so even though you form the groups, you form the lab, even though you help each other, each student would turn in your own report. Okay? Don't say, hey, I work with topic. So what if great topic? Uh, yeah. So if we're all working together, are we going to have the same data? Oh, that data doesn't matter. As long as you learn, you learn a lot of stuff. So, and some of those labs are super intense. So basically, I would strongly recommend doing some of those labs in the groups. Okay, a lot of questions. Just time, just a time. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, if I do purchase like the Mambo drone, can I do all the projects with that, or will some of the projects be Mambo specific and some be? So there are some projects with Mambo. I I tell you, I, I hate this. Okay, basically, to make students purchase two drones or use two different platforms. But the issue is Mambo drone is out of production. But we have low level control on Mambo. When I say low level control, it means actually bear with me. I'll show you what I mean. There is a full-fledged MATLAB simulator for Mambo. What it means is you can simulate control the drone in MATLAB, write the firmware and flash it on the drone, and make sure that whatever you see in the simulation. The video, the drone is doing the exact same thing. We can't do that with Parrot. I mean, we, we can't do that with uh, Telo because Telo gives us only APIs, which means you send the command, you get the signal, and Telo will do it. But Telo is in production. And MATLAB right now is developing the firmware for Telo, but it's not out yet. So till that comes out, we have to use those two different things. Uh, it should not appear to me uh, how are we getting mango? So uh, you have multiple mango, you'll get yellow and then yes, I have, yes. Okay. I have so I have multiple mangoes, I have multiple tailors. What you just need to do is four students should come together and I will give you one mango and I will give you one tailor. At the end of this class, you will return me one tailor and one mango. 
if you break the tello, you can buy a tello and give it to me. If you break the mambo, you still have to buy the mambo. Remember, the 300 buck mambo. <laughs> Did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> um, how many of the labs on Trando specifically do you have to use out of the four labs? So, I'll show you what I want to do. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I had a lot of high hopes. So I did six, seven, eight. So yeah, I, I had this crazy idea. Like, Rather than doing exams, questions, and all that stuff, I will teach you the material and I'll show you how that is actually. Uh, oh, look, MATLAB, how was it programming? So basically, and then you would just, whatever you learn, uh, you would do some MATLAB simulations and then actually see the drone flying or failing or doing crazy things. So initially, that was my plan. So I had about seven labs for. Uh, uh, Hello, and I had about six or seven lakhs for Mambo. But now with COVID, uh, what I'm afraid of that we may not be able to do all those lakhs. So what I'm going to do is there are some core lakhs that I want to do. So I want to do some lakhs or some projects here, and I want you to repeat those. So there are some core lakhs that we will do. And there are some labs that I would recommend for you to do. And I promise you, once you start playing with a drone, once you see the robotics in action, then I'm sure you will, you will want to go further and do it more and then understand this kind of things. So there will be few labs. There won't be a lot of things. And again, I will discuss uh, this time. I just don't want to force the content on you. Uh, next time, I will actually show you go through uh, each and every project and just I want to make sure that uh, you're able to uh, reasonably able to do this because to be honest with you let's let's be prepared we do not know what's going to happen so if COVID hits bad then probably if we decide to if we if I, I get sick if I cannot come to class if I get quarantined then I would be teaching over zoom right I don't know how to do last for Zoom. So that so we have to be flexible. But anyway, we'll make sure that you'll get uh, the the content. Oh, so, the end of the project is just yeah, one page before. Yeah, you can add videos to it. I mean, uh, so I, I'm not gonna ask you to write. I don't believe in writing uh, 10, 15 to the support. If you do the lab. If you shoot a nice video, uh, you just add the link and upload the video to YouTube. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah, but last semester uh, I had some bad experience with some other videos. So, so like uh, somebody just bought an online, I mean, somebody bought on the shelf uh, robot arm and just showed the robot arm demo using the software that came with the robot arm. So just just don't do that. So try to try to have fun with it. Try to learn. Okay. Any question? So end up uh, thing. Uh, last March. What time does the class end? Oh, seven fifty. No, good. Oh, I had time. All right. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you the the Mambo labs. And why I'm emphasizing on this. So once you open this Simulink code, and you don't have to do it right now, we will do it together. Once you open the Simulink code, please note that the firmware is written in MATLAB. So what that means is if you double click, it will actually take you to the low level control of firmware. Not only that, what you can do is you can actually see here that how the data from the pressure sensor, how the data from accelerometer, how the data from ultrasonic sensor, all is coming, how it is processed. There is some uh, fantastic filtering that goes inside. How the filtering is done 
how that data goes out and then how does flight control system respond to the disturbances so this low level programming we don't we can't do on telos but we can do this with mambo we can change the number of sensors that are used we can change the the filter like instead of common filter we can use a complementary filter and then we see what would happen to mambo would mambo perform the way we expected or it will actually fail and then what you can do is here you can actually build deploy and start so you can actually deploy this algorithms the actual robotics algorithms on to the drone and you can see it flying so this low level control is fantastic it's a lot of fun so that's what we are going to do and if you go up you will notice that there are six pids six pid controls that actually control the stability of this drone and there are a lot of interesting labs on parrot mumbo so we, i'm i'm hoping that we would be able to so these are the examples and we will i will try to do some of those and the beauty of that is there is a canal actually you can add on to mumbo so basically you can shoot small uh, pallets from the canal it is actually a grabber with this mumbo so you can actually interface the grabber and then you can have that mumbo go grab something you can don't grab heavier than this so you can grab maybe a, a sponge block and then take from one place to another place you can do optical flow you can do that all that type of stuff so i am planning to do lot of labs with to uh, using mumbo i will also will play with uh, the control algorithms like pids these pids the other thing what i want to tell you is there is a full blown software simulator for mambo which is created inside matlab so this is can you see that's the mambo so what you can do is you can do something called as model based design or model model based control of the mambo you will see mambo flying in the simulated environment and then take that code flash it on to mambo and trust me mambo will do the same i actually try that so it's a very fantastic uh, experience at least it was for me when i was actually playing with it so i would encourage you to get this platform i would i promise you it will be worth every penny so sir yeah just to clarify get this regardless of what drone you get you use this software regardless of what matlab we are going to use right. matlab we are going to use to control telo and to program pack but these two drone platforms one is uh, those that will be the hardware that we we'll play with the other thing which i want to share with you is i'm negotiating i don't know have you seen the drone studio at tempi campus no okay so these are so okay i'll get that get to that in just a second so these are all the labs and we will actually try to do in 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 class i plan on doing some of these labs but if you bring the drone to the to the class you should not you, sh you should have drone without the props no props uh, in class if you want to fly the drone you can attach the props and you can fly the drone either in tech 17 165 or there is a drone studio and i am trying to negotiate and hopefully i would be successful you can actually use this drone studio they issue drone studio so this is a fantastic facility wherein it's about a, a size of a basketball court it's, it was a old basketball court and then there you can actually fly the drones 
in those. This is part of DBOP. Uh, and you can actually, I'm trying to negotiate an access, but in what we would do is there will be someone, either me or my student or the grader that will be there. You can go to this drone studio and actually fly your drones indoor in a safe facility. The drone that we have, the Mambo and Telo, uh, those drones are safe to fly indoor. You can fly those drones uh, at, outside, at your place. The good news is actually we have quite a few students in this class that volunteer and finish the labs during the break. So I know, Tatvik, you finished the lab, right? Four labs, five labs. You have done with labs? How many labs did you do? Five. Five labs. And who else? There are about, yeah. How many labs did you do? Five. Five. You also? Okay. So there are students uh, who in my opinion wasted their break. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You want me to hug you or what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so they wasted their uh, break and actually did the lab. So uh, we are gonna, I'm gonna ask them to be present either at Tech 155 or a drone studio. So if you need help performing any of those labs, they will be around and they will help you. So you certainly get help with uh, Halo drones. Mambo, I'll take care. So that way, and then we will do a uh, Mambo lab. I'll demonstrate in this class. And then you are welcome to do those labs either at home or you can do those labs at the drone studio or you can do the labs on uh, Tech 165. So it will be a lot of interactive thing that I have planned, but bear with me again, depends upon COVID. So, okay, any questions from students? No, you don't, you don't need to form the groups if you are purchasing Telo and Mambo. Uh, then uh, you can do the labs on your own. But if you form a group, that would be beneficial. That way you can help each other out. So I'm going to do these labs. Uh, there are some additional labs wherein uh, you actually tune the controller. You can make, so you can see that Initially, I was thinking that uh, we can have a drone flight, a fight. It means you have one mambo fighting with another mambo. You can have those. Uh, I also have those uh, cannon blocks. So basically, you add the cannon block to mambo, and you rec uh, recognize an object, and basically you can fire the cannon ball. So I could do that with uh, a simple object, like uh, you can do the object recognition and fire the ball. Or a driver, you can actually have a small piece of foam. Or maybe it is plastic, the grabber will actually grab it and Mambo will take from one place to other place. So there are a lot of things that you can do with Mambo. And, and if you guys want, if you are really super excited, uh, I can assign you some, uh, some labs. So the two labs that I actually thought of is uh, grab and then second one is the, the cannon block. And it actually shows that how it is done. And it's very simple. Just grab this block, connect it to the parrot drone, and then apply the force. So if you run the algorithm for phase detection, object detection, when that object is detected, you basically send the signal to the, the cannon block and it will just fire the cannon box. So it's, it's not difficult. So we can, and it works very nice. Too bad they stopped making this drone. Okay. Any any other questions I can answer before I go to the, the course content? And then there will be MATLAB programming, of course. Okay, so in today's class, what I wanna do is, uh, So in today's class, uh, let me see, there is full screen, yeah. So in today's class, uh, I wanna talk about the introduction and these slides that follow the textbook very closely and I'm going to follow the textbook very closely. 
these are the slides that were provided by the author and then i actually modified those for the course content so why do we want to fly the multi copters they are fun to fly they are easier to uh, control they are uh, basically very flexible we will talk about how to fly the the drones remotely we'll also talk about a little bit about the history and i would give you overall structure of the class so if you have any questions you can ask me there is something called as the fixed wing aircraft there is something called as the helicopter which is which has only one rotor on top and the tail rotor is to prevent the rotation because of the reaction torque and then multi copter you have more, one more than one rotor and there are distinct advantages of these different platforms fixed wing it, they can travel long distance but unfortunately they do can't hover so basically there is something called as stall speed if the fixed wing aircraft goes below certain speed there is not enough lift and that aircraft will fall down so that's why if you need hovering capability you you have to use helicopter or you have to use multi copter unfortunately helicopter or multi copter are not as efficient as fixed wing because just to fly you need to have that rotor rotating what it means is you would be spending energy just for hovering but then the advantage is flexibility and you can actually it's you can't fly a fixed wing uav or even fixed wing aircraft in this room but you can fly a mini drone in this room safely so and again i can tell you from my own experience uh, multi copters are easier to control and i don't know if you have flown the drones that we get on amazon or ebay those tiny tiny drones they have come so far that they can do flips 8d flips take pictures and everything you can control with your smartphone that's why nowadays they don't come with the rc receiver uh, on old days the drones used to come with some sort of receiver transmitter but now basically you can just fly those with your smartphone and the multi copters the most common multi copter is called quad copter quad is four <clears throat> so there are basically four props and please understand uh, there is a sequence to the prop some props are clockwise some props are counter clockwise and we'll talk about the dynamics of quad copter and dynamics of multi copter a little bit later so please try to understand that they are very agile and they can lift a significant amount of load uh depending upon what amount of thrust that is generated so then there are some experimental aircraft like the ones that i worked on like stop rotor there are tilt rotor aircraft and if you are into tilt rotor aircraft i was amazed with parrot x plane so if you get a chance to take a look at that plane that x plane is the the sort of the fixed wing with uh, uh, on the wing there are small rotors so it takes off as helicopter and there is a remote button that you press and in flight it transitions as a plane and then it flies as a plane it's super difficult to achieve i can tell you that dynamics the transition dynamics is very very complex so and then not other when usually when something like that happens the first thing would happen is that aircraft would fall down but they achieve the stability and flight dynamics so that the aircraft on its own you can just if it's hovering press the button it will transition and it will fly as a plane so that's fun that's actually a very good plane so again the basic uh, uh, project uh, we have another project we are working with the department of defense wherein we are developing something called as a coaxial rotor so in this case is a quad copter but in addition to quad copter there is a rotor at the center so we are actually building when you come to lab i will show you that borna you know most of you know borna borna and steam 
they are building a coaxial helicopter so basically one prop on top one prop on bottom and basically it takes off as helicopter the advantage of coaxial uh, rotors or the multicopter like this configuration is more thrust so a uh, high power to weight ratio now a small difference in nomenclature so there is something called as the uavs and there is something called as the model aircraft so model aircraft are the rc planes and rc helicopters that you fly uavs are like if you think about it like the predator drone or basically the four copter that can autonomously fly and it could be manned or it could be unmanned so that is the difference between uav and the model aircraft so if you see small rc planes small quadcopters those are like model aircraft they may be I mean you can add some specific flight control and make it autonomous but in general to begin with they are not autonomous and they are usually used for sports and recreational purpose not for some serious military or commercial use so when we talk about drones we are actually referring to uavs and contrary to what uh, uh, you have heard, you might have heard uavs could be fixed wing uavs can be rotary wing uavs can be combination of multiple aircraft but the biggest thing about the uh, uh, drones or uavs is you have autonomy you don't need human in control you can actually make it fully autonomous or semi autonomous but some sort of autonomy must exist to to call that flying thing or flying robot a drone now why do we use multicopters uh, the reason we use multicopters first of all because it can hover at one place aircrafts cannot do that and the way it hovers is if you think about it then when there is a prop that is rotating in one direction the fuselage that is attached to the prop or the motor that is attached to the prop would rotate in the opposite direction so there is always action torque and the reaction torque what happens is what we do is we change the direction of rotation of props so that the reaction torques cancel each other there is x plane configuration or uh, x configuration or there is plus configuration and there are different advantages and disadvantages of that we will talk about it but at the end of the day what's going to happen is you will see that a quadcopter they will have props in clockwise and counter clockwise directions and they will be mounted in specific way but at the end the total thrust that is generated from prop 1 prop 2 prop 3 and prop 4 the total thrust would equal to weight for a stable hover and then whenever you have the pitch and roll what you do is you first change the speed of those props and then basically have that aircraft go in pitching motion or in rolling motion when you want that aircraft to yaw then what you do is you let the reaction torque overcome the action torque so basically the aircraft yaws about the central axis and we are going to talk about the dynamics one thing i want you to understand is you have something called as the tail rotor why is this tail rotor required because think about the helicopter helicopter has a central rotor on top if you don't have a tail rotor the whole fuselage would rotate so the top prop is or the top rotor is going to rotate in clockwise direction fuselage will rotate in counter clockwise direction to avoid that counter clockwise movement you have a ducted fan in this case or a tail rotor that will provide or give on at the torque that would cancel out the torque on the fuselage that case does not happen in the case of coaxial because one rotor is rotating in clockwise direction and the other rotor is rotating in counter clockwise direction so these two rotors cancel each other now if you how do you control the quadcopters so basically any quadcopter if you change the amount of thrust then it will go up or it will come down typically you would have that on an rc receiver transmitter pair 
So you can have an RC transmitter that would actually go forward, backward, or if you want to go up, down, you will have two uh, levers. There are two types of transmitters, mode one and mode two. Depending upon what transmitter you have, uh, you would have uh, the buttons either on the left or on the right. Now, if you want the, the aircraft to pitch or if you want aircraft to roll, what you do is the, you uh, change the speed of the props. So basically that generates a differential thrust. With that differential thrust, basically you have a rotating moment and then that rotating moment gives you the pitching. So you can have roll or you can have pitch. What you do is you adjust the amount of thrust and differential thrust that actually causes that aircraft to pitch or for roll. Now we will want to compare what is the advantage and disadvantage of fixed wing aircraft compared to helicopters, compared to multi-copters. And then, so it completely depends upon what purpose you want that aircraft to serve. So if you want aircraft to go long distances, if you want aircraft to be fuel efficient, then you go with a fixed wing. If you want aircraft to be highly maneuverable, so then you would go with the quadcopter. If you want uh, both, so in between, then you would go with a helicopter. Now, a little bit of math, and again, we will revisit this. <clears throat> so this basically gives you uh, the issues. What is the major issue with the quadcopter? So the issue with quadcopter is, as you can see, that the dynamic response of the aircraft is totally depend upon the, the prop, because prop is the one that is generating the thrust then variation differential thrust is going to give you the pitch and roll. So the problem with quadcopters is the longer the radius of the prop, the dynamic response of the prop is slower. But then the problem is if you make that prop small, you have to increase the speed so that it would generate the same amount of thrust. Now, I don't know if you know how the air, uh, the helicopters basically uh, pitch and roll. Uh, so what they have is they have something called as the squash plate and the squash plate changes the pitch of the, the blades either together or cyclically. So basically you have something called as the squash plate and that would change the pitch of the blade, uh, the rotor blade as it is going forward and it's going backward then it's actually changing the pitch of the blade uh, sequentially. So there is something called as the cyclic pitch, which actually changes as the blade completes one revolution. Now, because of that, what happens is there is enormous amount of loading on the squash plates, and even there is a lot of load on the blade. So there's something interesting I wanna talk about. If you are interested, in the, the helicopters. So there is a company right here, which is called uh, Able Engineering next to the airport, where what they do is they refurbish the aircraft parts and then sell those to the customer. For example, whenever the, just like parts, every component that goes onto an aircraft has uh, something called as operation arms. And by law and by FA regulation, after those many operating hours, that part must be replaced. That part would not fail. That part has not failed. But after a certain duration of time, that part needs to be replaced. So Able Engineering, what they do is they make these replacement parts for these OEM manufacturers. And they have hired a lot of our students. So if you're interested in the helicopters, uh, how the helicopter parts are manufactured, refurbished, put together. Uh, Able Engineering is right here. Now, there are some experimental aircrafts and uh, I would strongly recommend not to fly these or not to uh, travel in these, but uh, there are a lot of work that is going on even at DARPA, uh, which is actually doing flying car. 
it is nothing but sort of a helicopter uh, on with the wheels which are powered so basically you have a helicopter with flat uh, uh, rotor and then what you have is you have the 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 wheels but those wheels are actually powered so basically that that vehicle can travel on the road and when the need is you can actually spread the the wing spread the the rotor and then it will take off as a helicopter so why are we focusing on quadcopters i don't know if you have noticed this or not but in last 10 years quadcopters have taken a, 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 a big leap and the reason for that is the computational power the microprocessor microcontroller smartphones they were available and everyone had access to all those the cost of computation went down the cost of chips went down and because of that after 2010 11 basically the, the whole thing boomed now i don't know if you know there is a, a group which is called diy drones so that group was formed in 2007 2006 i was part of that and then i helped them on uh, developing the, the first autopilot on arduino platform which was called ardu pilot if you think about it it's an arduino code uh, it works on the Arduino. it works on atmel uh, avr platform that can interface with uh, the sensors that can interface with gps and actually can actually fly the drone so but then it took over then it it led to something called as 3d robotics then it basically went became pick hawk and all that type of stuff so that's a fantastic platform if you want to actually look at the flight control and you can fly larger drones autonomously with that platform so just to conclude this class is going to be a lot of fun and multi-cropters uh, they are actually if you see a lot of research at asu is done with multi-copters so this course will equip you to do the research just to give you some sort of structure of this course so it is this course is not supposed to be uh, uh, the higher advanced course this is lucky like, like a beginner course but i'm going to try to touch upon all the aspects of quadcopters there is some design part so we will look at aircraft design we will look at structure we will look at propulsion we will look at coordinate system and attitude representation we will talk about the dynamic model first four chapters are super simple this is lesson five when the course becomes a little bit intense and chapter six is a difficult and hard topic then we will look at sensor calibration we will look at observability kalman filter and we will look at the state estimation and i would be honest with you i taught this state estimation observability kalman filter all that uh, but unless you see that thing working you will not appreciate the, the beauty of it in a sense like what it's exactly doing i mean it is like sometimes mind boggling to see that you have so much crappy data going to the system and that algorithm is still able to give you the best possible clean result so basically that is uh, so we'll talk about low level position control and we we'll, i will just give you an idea on semi autonomous and then we will look at some uh, uh, mission uh, decision planning and i'm planning to sort of interface the tero labs and the, the memo labs throughout this course so that if we talk about the path planning then probably we would do some implementation for mambo or for for tele so this course will be lots of hands-on so uh, i'm gonna be here for some more time to answer any questions you may have but in at the end of today's class what you should do is you should think about either buying those one of those platforms or two platforms or come up form the groups of four students and uh, on thursday i would announce when you can come and pick up the drones so for on the mambo i would just give you the the bare bones fuselage 
uh, you will have to purchase the battery and the prop because I tell you, I expect props to break. They are going to break. And I expect the batteries to be depleted. So you are better off buying two or three batteries on your own so that uh, you can continue working on the drone. So with that, I'm going to stop here and answer any questions you may have. Yeah. Are you free after class? Yeah. Uh, can I talk to you after class? Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. yeah. I do video. Yeah, so what I so if you purchase bamboo separately, you will not get a cost break. But if 10 or 15 students come together, assuming that you are buying to buy 10 drones, you can say I want to buy 10 drones for 35 bucks. And uh, if the seller agrees, each one will save five bucks. Because we have to like, actually ask him for this. Yeah, you can't just, yeah, you have to make an offer. He won't directly give you a discount. You have to make an offer on eBay, you know, right? On, on eBay, you make an offer, you have to pay $10, loans, $35 each, and one student has to collect all the money and pay it off. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, um, good. Yeah. Uh, I need you after the class. Yes, of course. Okay.